Hello, I am Red Mage, and welcome to a Magic the Gathering video featuring the color red. In today's video, we're comparing two different mono red aggro decks to see which one we think is best for the current standard best of one metagame. Essentially what we're doing right now is trying to find the deck that we can most effectively rank up with while we're waiting for the new set Outlaws at Thunder Junction to come out. This deck list is a best of three deck that has been putting up a lot of good results on Magic Online. The card choices in here are fairly typical of the kind of best of three decks that you see put up good tournament results. Essentially, they are loading up on the most powerful cards. You see that they play two Sokens on instead of just one, even though that does risk messing up your mana. Two Mishra's Foundry, even though that can cause problems with colored mana in a deck that plays so many one-mana spells. Three Witch Talker Frenzy and four Monstrous Rage. Both of those cards are incredibly effective when they are good. Witch Talker Frenzy can be more or less a complete blank sometimes against blue-white control. Monstrous Rage is a big liability if you don't draw a lot of creatures, and you're playing against a deck that has a lot of removal. I like the idea of playing Fugitive Codebreaker in a deck with a lot of Monstrous Rage. That, of course, makes a lot of sense. When you have more prowess creatures, you want more pump spells. I think the biggest downside of Fugitive Codebreaker is actually that it makes it not impossible, but surely unwise to play Squee in the same deck. You just can't afford to eat up your graveyard with the squee if you're counting on getting any amount of value with the coat breaker. And then finally, Case of the Crimson Pulse. This card provides overwhelming advantage if it sticks on the board and you're not dying. The problem, of course, is against blue-white control, against team or ramp, you're not really playing long games. You are either winning quickly or losing relatively quickly, even against blue-white control. All of those caveats aside, this is full of powerful cards. That's the whole point. The liabilities that come with overloading your deck with powerful cards, of course, automatically come with the benefit of always drawing a bunch of powerful cards. I played the exact main deck, the exact 60 card main deck of this best of three list in the best of one standard ladder on Arena. I played 112 games and I had a record of 66 and 46. That's a 59% win rate over a very large sample size. Clearly you can just take this exact deck list copied from Magic Online Leagues and play it and you should be able to rank up with it. So let's watch a couple games with this and kind of see the advantage of this sort of build where you just have a lot of really powerful cards. And then we'll talk about the next mono red aggro deck list that I have. It's one that I built specifically for the best of one ladder using data. Well, this is certainly a hand that we will keep. Depending on what our opponent is playing and what comes off the top of the deck, this could either be completely unbeatable or very mopey. All right, so this could just be Golgari mid-range. It could be Sultai graveyard reanimator stuff. Gonna play Codebreaker here. We are likely to cast on creature spells in the next turn or two, and I wanna have stuff out to get our prowess triggers. Okay, so there are three mana sweepers that exist. Well, I think we're explosive enough Okay, so they've definitely got something. I was going to say we can... Since we've got the Witch Talker Frenzy, we can afford to blow the Lightning Strike now. Um, even if they have a 3-drop next turn. But they clearly have... Likely a removal spell. There's not much else they could reasonably have here. So they're going to kill the Code Breaker... We'll deal six between the Lightning Strike and the Swift Spear. I'm going to go ahead and play the Scoundrel. I 
The reason I'm doing this is because I think it's super likely that they are going to kill the Codebreaker with a, you know, go for the throat, yeah, or whatever, bitter triumph. If it seemed like that was not going to happen, I would save back the Scoundrel so that we could get the trigger this turn and get our two Pravis triggers with the Lightning Strike. As it turns out, we drew a Scoundrel for the Kamano trigger. Um, so this is looking pretty good. I don't think there's any reason not to cast it. You don't want to waste your Kamano trigger. All right, that's fine. It's worth considering putting it on the Swift Spear because we lost three damage there instead of two damage. But the Swift Spear is going to be useful enough in the future that I don't know that that really matters. Okay. So we kill one Dread Knight. Yeah, I think... I don't think we want to worry about lightning striking a Dread Knight here. We just do this, let them trade with whatever they're going to trade with. I mean, there's nothing they can do that gets them out of this, right? I can't imagine any card in their deck. If they play a Shieldred, we just win with the lightning strike. And there we go. We're definitely keeping this. If we wanted to, we could curve Kamano into Codebreaker into face down Codebreaker. Because we have very few instants and sorceries in our hand, I'm not sure that's going to be worth it, but it is an option we can consider. Tapped Haunted Ridge, all right. Okay, so this actually, Swift Spear is a perfect draw. That allows us to, next turn, we can either Swift Spear plus Codebreaker or Swift Spear plus Lightning Strike. So what are we worried about? We're worried about Brotherhood's End, right? So we do this. I'm going to put a Wicked Roll on the Scoundrel. It looks like they have a removal spell and they're deciding when and on what to use it. That incentivizes me a little bit to play the Swift Spear. I don't love doing that for just one damage this turn, potentially wasting it in a Brotherhood's End that they will definitely cast next turn if they have it. Yeah, it's not good either way. If they don't have a Brotherhood's in, we definitely want to play this with Spear. And it does look like they have a removal spell. Yeah. But now we're still going to hold it back. Um, we certainly don't want to waste it for zero damage. All right, so it looks like they're n they either don't have it or they're not going to cast. I, I would be surprised... Like, in this spot, if I, I were them, I would probably kill that Codebreaker um, and still Brotherhood's End if those are the cards that happen to be in my hand. But now that this has happened, what do we want to do next? I think it's probably Codebreaker plus Kamano, and then next turn we can Swift Spear plus Lightning Strike uh they could potentially have a blocker next turn. Again, we have no instants and sorceries in the graveyard, only one in our hand. We're nowhere near six mana. It's probably not worth it to really consider the face down side of the code breaker. All right, so Volcanic Spite, like it's a generically good card. Um, but 
with the removal available in standard, especially if you're playing black, this kind of suggests a more combo-y sort of deck. Okay, and they give up. All right, so this is my mono red aggro deck list that I built specifically for the best of one ladder. As you can see, we're a little less all in. We're hedging our bets a little more, but as we'll see, this deck is still just full of really good, really effective cards. So we've got only two Wish Shocker Frenzy and three Monstrous Rage. For the reasons that we talked about, those cards can sometimes be liabilities. And unlike the best of three metagame, which is what the previous deck list was built for, there's a lot less mid range on the best of one ladder. So Wish Shocker Frenzy is less important. Caveat to that, is that it's actually quite effective against team or ramp because there are plenty of uh, three toughness creatures that we want to kill in that deck and even sometimes four toughness creatures as well. Because we're not playing Fugitive Codebreaker, we can play more of a classic mono red aggro build from the last couple of seasons of standard. We've got a couple of Squee in here. Squee goes really well with Godric and is just an incredibly powerful card on its own. We also have one Felden and two Bloodthirsty Adversary, as well as two Voldaren Epicure. This allows us to be pretty low to the ground, makes it more likely that we're going to have a one drop in most of our games, makes it more likely that we're going to be able to take advantage of the plus one plus one counter trigger on Kamado Face's Kakazan. We do get a little bit of graveyard disenergy with Bloodthirsty Adversary and Squee competing for graveyard resources. But it's not the same as Fugitive Codebreaker because Bloodthirsty Adversary only needs to take one card out of the graveyard. So it's not taking that much away from Squee. Whereas Squee com can completely empty the graveyard for the Codebreaker and make it impossible to get the card advantage from it. The two deck lists are not all that dissimilar. Um, last thing to note, is the mana base only one Sokinzan, only one Mistress Foundry. I like to play one Mirax instead of two Mistress Foundry. That way we get colored mana the turn it comes into play, which can be very crucial on turn two if you want to cast two one drops. And finally, we have one Shock. Obviously, this could be the third Witch Shocker Frenzy. Using Shock instead, because it is more efficient in the mirror, and it is something that can go face now this deck list, I haven't tested quite as much. I played 22 games with this deck and went 14 and eight. That's a 64% win rate. So that's a little bit of a higher win rate than the other list. In fact, that's, that's a significant difference, but the sample size is much smaller. So we've got to take that into account. So let's watch some games with this deck now, and we'll be back at the end to wrap up. This is certainly a hand we're going to keep. All right, I think we're gonna start with Epicure here, and then depending on what they do on their turn two, we'll either Swift Spear plus Shock or play one of our two drops. Okay, Shock looking good, maybe, yep, okay. So yeah, I think we Swiss Spear plus Shock the Phoenix check. And then next turn we can play a 2-drop plus play with Fire a Kamano. Hopefully we can turn around our disadvantage of being on the draw by keeping their board relatively clear. Doubling the festivities. Yep. Well, that's going to make things difficult. All right. So it looks like they have a monstrous rage. If they had a play with fire, they would have at least considered killing the scoundrel with the wicked roll trigger on the stack. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try to kill the Kamano unless they fire off. 
Oh, okay, they're just going face, okay. So we'll let them resolve their scry and then we'll kill the Kamano. They scry to the top. It's a little concerning. Mm. So, yeah, that's sort of the thing, right? Like, that is an incredibly good draw. Wow. I'm not going to wait and try and get the value out of the adversary. It could take many turns before we draw a fifth land. Want to just try and get the game over with while we have an advantage. I'm going to attack with the Foundry here. It's more damage this turn. And if we draw a Godric, we'll be able to trigger it. Trigger Celebration. All right. So it's noteworthy. There aren't a lot of cards that Shock could have been instead that would have allowed us to win this game. Unless we're playing Voltage Surge or something like that, which you would never, ever play. We probably would lose that game. If that was a Witch Shocker Frenzy, we lose. We don't. We wouldn't have the mana to cast it when we needed to. And I think we would have died before we were able to before we were able to stabilize. All right, we've got a one, two, three curve and a one mana removal spell. Seems good. Flexibility with the scoundrel, whether we want to do a wicked roll. Oh, I see. So in this case, I think we're going to play the Kamano. And we'll save the play with fire. Basic planes, it's hard to tell what this is, but it could be a creature deck for sure. So we'll see if we can pick off something and then cast the, cast the Squee next turn. A dinosaur. Okay, so there's nothing in the dinosaur deck that we want to kill with the play with fire that hasn't been cast on turn two yet. That being said, we know what we're doing next turn. We're casting the squee. We don't really need to scry. We might want to save the play with fire to two for one ourselves to kill a dinosaur and or just get a prowess trigger. So I guess we'll wait. So the opponent has something, obviously. It's pausing here. We could consider then Charming Scoundrel plus Epicure instead of the Squee. I mean, they have Basic Plains Cavern of Souls, so... You know, it's likely just get lost or something like that. But I think I'm okay with that. If they cast a get lost on the Squee, that gives us some... Um, value for future turns. Yep. Because the risk the other way is that, I mean, I'm not sure what rat, three mana rat they would have. It could just be, uh, temporary lockdown. All right, well, we haven't hit our land drop yet, so I think we want to do some of this. Okay. So I think we go ahead and do it again in case they do have a temporary lockdown or something. All right, more lands. We'll put a wicked roll here. 
They might have a wrath next turn. I didn't. That's why I didn't want to just play the Epicure plus the Scoundrel if they have a wrath or a temporary lockdown and we lose our value from the get lost. We just drew two cards there, which they're both lands, so that's not great, but it's not that bad. Um, it means we're going to get to our other stuff. We have more mana to cast our spells when we draw them so that we can potentially unload for one lethal turn. So I think I want to start here by casting Epicure and then cycling a mountain. Start to get some material in the graveyard. Okay. So we'll let them scry. Two to the top. Very unfortunate. So we'll kill this thing. And we'll get our prowess trigger value. Lightning strike. Probably we want that. If they have a Wrath that takes their whole turn, then we will win with uh, Scoundrel plus Lightning Strike. Okay, so they're gaining life here. If it's play a land, cast a Wrath. Oh, that's worse. Okay. So they can't block with the Stomper. If we kill the creature that they block with the Archangel, will that get us there? Let's say they block the Kamano. We kill the Kamano. And that's two, four, six, seven. That's one short. All right, well, what are we going to do, right? Maybe they'll block a creature with a wicked roll on it. That would be awesome. Yeah, they're blocking the Kamano. That is the correct thing to do. So in that case, we have to two for one ourselves to kill the... Archangel, unfortunately. Very unfortunate. I mean, if they don't have a Wrath, we're just going to win, but even if they do have a Wrath, at this point, I don't think they have enough mana left to Oh, yeah. Okay. Nice. They had a lot of cards that are very good against us. Like, look at all this. That's awesome. It's good to see, um, especially this thing, is getting played specifically to beat the teamer ramp decks and it just happens to be really good against us because gaining life is really good against us and exiling our graveyard is sometimes really good against us as well but we were still able to beat two cycled herd migrations an archangel of wrath and this thing not bad all right we definitely keep these There will be some turn twos where we want to just Monster Rage plus play with fire. I assume not too many, but we'll see what our opponent is doing. Looks like they mulligan to five. Uh huh. Well, this is such a situation. We will definitely Monster Rage plus play with fire.
if we wait, uh, they could potentially play their own Monstrous Rage and get it up to three toughness. There we go. And of course, this is good for them, but we're ahead. We're now winning the race. Hmm. So I think here we actually want to make a treasure. That way we can... Use the adversary next turn. Do the uh, kicker, the pseudo kicker. Or, I mean, potentially we could soak in Zon too, depending on. I don't know why that would be better. All right, so do we win? I think so, right? Um, three, six, nine, ten. Yep. So our opponent did mulligan to five. That is very bad luck for them. But they still have a card in hand. They didn't miss a land drop. They cast Swift Spear into Swift Spear plus Monstrous Rage into Squee. And we're back to wrap up. It will be no surprise to you if you've watched my Mono Red Aggro videos before that I prefer this deck list that I built specifically for the best of one metagame. I prefer to be conservative with Monstrous Rage, even though it is one of the best cards in the deck. I like a lot of one drops. I like a lot of burn spells. I will note that standard is hard right now. All of the decks are very good. The games are high variance. You're definitely going to go through losing streaks, and it's going to be frustrating. I think that either of these decks are good choices to rank up with, but with either one and with any deck that you could possibly choose right now, you're just going to lose a lot of frustrating games. And so you want to try and pick something that, of course, has a positive win rate, but whose losing streaks you're more emotionally prepared to handle. There are a lot of exciting cards coming out in Thunder Junction, and in the next video, we'll be playing the new standard format. Until then, good luck ranking up. And I'll see you in the next one.